Hey guys, Tony Maritato here, physical therapist, and welcome to the Knee Replacement Support Group YouTube channel. In this video, I want to dive deep into your right to choose as a patient following a total knee replacement, whether you want to buy, rent, uh, secure a continuous passive motion device, a CPM or not. So this has been a popular topic, lots of questions on the subject, and I'm going to start with my personal opinion as a clinician. My only concern with the CPM, I do not believe it poses any kind of threat or harm or cause of concern, but what it does do is it does take time away from you being on your feet, from you moving and walking and doing the things that you got the knee replacement um, to allow you to do in the first place. I never want somebody to sacrifice time on their feet for a CPM device. You know, if, if you're prescribed, I've heard some people prescribed eight hours a day on a CPM. That just seems crazy to me. I guess you could try to do it while you're sleeping, but generally speaking, that's eight hours that you're not moving, you're not standing, you're not walking and doing the things that the knee was designed to do. So my personal bias is I lean toward not using a CPM unless there's a medical, a true medical reason why you absolutely need the CPM. Now that being said, let me take you into the research, let me take you into the guidelines, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you on the Medicare website that Medicare Part B, traditional Medicare, does cover the use, the rental of a CPM. I'll show you for how long, and I'll show you how to find a supplier that can provide you with a Medicare-covered CPM device. So let me share my screen. I want to start with this article published, I'm going to zoom in so you guys see a little better, published by the APTA, the American Physical Therapy Association. And basically, if I just do a quick search here to jump down to the main section, these are kind of the standard guidelines for how physical therapists should treat individuals who have had a total knee replacement. This is based on the best clinical research available, but the specific section related to CPM devices, the guideline is physical therapists should not use CPMs for patients who have undergone primary uncomplicated total knee arthroplasty. So that's what the APTA organization is advising. And the reason why the rationale for high quality studies, six moderate quality studies, two low quality studies examine the effects of CPM Findings from one, uh, one moderate quality to low quality report some significant statistical effects. However, these findings were contra uh, <laughs> contradicted by non-significant statistical findings in higher quality studies. So basically, the jury is out. You know, risk for harm, bed rest, may be may prolong may be prolonged with cpm that's my concern i don't want you laying on a device for 8 to 10 to 12 hours uh, there is an inconvenience of use kind of a pain it's kind of a hassle although costs were reported in some studies they were expected there were the normal associated costs um, potential benefits results for outcomes and function were non-significant results for hospital length of stay, non-significant. So this is a great article. I'll post it because it, it, this article actually answers a lot of other questions about physical therapy related to knee replacements. I'll post the link in the video description. Going to the Medicare website. Now this is straight from the horse's mouth, Medicare Part B, continuous passive motion devices. So it is covered knee continuous passive motion devices are covered as durable medical equipment. Um, if your doctor prescribes them for home use, if they are medically necessary, if you had a knee replacement surgery, Medicare covers the CPM device for up to 21 days of use in your home. And then it gives you a little bit of information about it. And then here, it says find a supplier. So I went ahead and I did the search. I put in my local zip code and Mulaney's Home Healthcare. This is a local DME supplier. They have a ton of amazing medical equipment. They're providers with Medicare. So essentially if I was the patient looking for a CPM, 
my first responsibility is to talk to my surgeon. You have to have trust in your surgeon, understand that your surgeon wants what's best for you. But if you believe you would benefit from the CPM and your surgeon did not prescribe it, the first com conversation is with the surgeon. Why do you believe, I'm talking to the surgeon now, why do you believe I don't I wouldn't benefit from a CPM. Is this something that I should consider? What do you, Mr. Surgeon, Mrs. Surgeon, believe is the harm in getting one? And if you're not against it, you know, can I have one? And so you go through the proper chain of command. You talk to the surgeon first, you find out the rationale. They might just not really think of it. You know, because a lot of patients they believe don't need it, so they might not consider it for you. But if you feel that it would benefit you and you can have a conversation with your surgeon, your surgeon might just be like, hey, okay, no problem. Just write up the script and send it over and you're ready to go. Now, what happens if you're in the situation where your surgeon just says, no, absolutely not. But you, as the patient, want to have control over your healthcare. Well, you can also buy the device. Now, certainly it's not as cost effective as having Medicare pay for the device, but I just did a quick eBay search and I found this, you know, and I have no, I'm not recommending this, I've never used this, but like this one, for example, 90 day warranty, uh, refurbished, $950, buy it now, uh, $48 shipping. They have various devices, like here's one for $650. Obviously, you have to educate yourself. You have to do your research. Once again, I've never used a device. I'm not recommending you use a device. Um, but I want you to understand that there are options out there for you. If you believe this is something that would benefit you, if you believe that this has a role and a purpose within your recovery, and you have rationale for why you believe this is gonna be the best thing for you. But my advice is talk to your surgeon first. Talk to your physical therapist. Talk to the people and the team around you that have had the experience and the good fortune of working with hundreds, sometimes thousands of patients over a decade or two in their career and they can tell you. I can tell you that generally speaking, the patients that I know that have had CPM devices, I don't believe that they've benefited the patient, but I also don't believe that they've harmed the patient. And then once you've talked to your medical team, once you've decided this is something you want to do, the next step is reach out to a DME supplier, someone in your neighborhood, someone in your community um, that is contracted with Medicare. If you have Medicare, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan or some other non-Medicare plan, obviously you're, you're welcome to check the coverage for that and then decide what the next step is for you. Guys, if this content was helpful, I appreciate it. If you have more questions, do me a favor, go to the YouTube channel. You can find the channel down below. Look through the content. I have created over 600 videos on this channel answering almost every question imaginable related to total knee replacements. And if I haven't answered your question, go ahead and post your question in the comments below because your questions basically keep me in business. They give me something to do and ideas for future videos. As always, thanks so much, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.